I would like to uh, say something about what the main focus is of uh, our fairly new government. We, our government is more than a year now, but uh, they came into office after 10 years with uh, uh, right-wing politics and uh, very little attention, in my opinion, to, to uh, the environmental issue and also to to the uh, demands from the EU, in fact, on reducing uh, all sorts of, uh, of um, uh, products, uh, what's called uh, kvælstof, what is it? Um, nitrogen, et cetera, for, for, um, for the water. And, um, and uh, Things have changed because when our Prime Minister, Helle Thorning schmidt gave her opening speech at the new parliamentary session on the first Tuesday of October this year, she said, in Denmark we have taken care of our groundwater for many hundreds of years so that it's drinkable just as it is. Uh, and this we would like to continue for the next many hundred years. Denmark is one of the few Western countries where you can drink the groundwater all over the country. But there is a problem. Over the last 10 years, the use of pesticides has just gone up and up. Uh, dwellings, uh, drillings have been closed. Former government promised to do something about it, but they hardly did anything. But the actual government does. We have changed taxes on pesticides so that those with most negative impact on the environment become markedly more expensive, and those with little negative impact become cheaper. And we will punish those who deploy or illegal pesticides, or import, illegally imported pesticides, and we will deduct from their funding schemes, and we will even withdraw the authorization to use pesticides from those who seriously breach with the law with illegal pesticides. So this was what the Prime Minister said in her opening speech. So this actually tells quite uh, clearly that we have ambitions to, to improve uh, uh, the regime. Uh, this was just to give you an appetizer, but then um, to revert to, to what you were telling about uh, the EU that is um, uh, actually looking into the, well, the EU, the EFSA, which is uh, uh, authorizing the GMOs or should do or is to or should not do. Uh, in any way, the Ministers of Environment in 2008, they concluded at the Council meeting that the Commission's, uh, the commission's mandate to the EFSA to undertake a revision exercise and update its guidelines as regards to environmental risks assessments of GMO and G GMP. So they have to assess long-term effects, what they don't do now. Now they just look at 90 days, I think. Uh, they have to examine the criteria and requirements for assessing all GMPs, including herbicide-tolerant GMPs, with a view to reviewing them if necessary. And to study the potential consequences for the environment of changes in the use of herbicides caused by herbicide-tolerant GMPs. So, the question is now, EFSA is still in the process of revising its um, exercise. And um, the question is, will they make the changes uh, so that this will actually be included in their assessments? Will they also include socioeconomic or ethical criteria? Well, this is, uh, so now it's, it can be a little softer, but it can also be, uh, you can say, more unclear. Well, how do they actually make their decisions? So in my opinion, if they have to use socioeconomic and ethical uh, criteria, it still has to be something that we can actually measure. If not, it's just are we against or, or pro-GMO, GMP. I think tomorrow there is a vote in the European Parliament on EFTA, EFTA, EFTA um, budget, and I think this is crucial actually to some of the... Uh, have they done the revision of their um, uh, way of uh, working or, or haven't they done enough? That's up to the parliament to, to decide on that also. 
But in Denmark, the Minister of Environment will present a new pesticide strategy shortly. Uh, it, I cannot go into too much detail because it's actually still in the sort of uh, machinery <laughs> in Parliament. Uh, it is being discussed within government, but also uh, soon it will be discussed with uh, other parties. But there are, at, at least from the Prime Minister's speech, we know that there is something decided already. And uh, the strategy will support the change for ne less negative impact on groundwater, resources, ecosystems, and the natural environment. Uh, so the main idea is to look more into quantity and impact of pesticides rather than the num that just looking at the number of applications. Um, and the impact is meant to be reduced by 40%. But this doesn't, of course, tell anything about exactly what herbicides, what uh, crop, etc., will be, uh, what, what will be the final result of this new strategy. This we don't know clearly, but of course this has been taken into account when, when each pesticide was um, uh, evaluated before, because now we have a new tax system on pesticides, which is uh, actually now in the EU for notification. It's supposed to take effect in January, and we know that it will take a couple of years to to really run in, I, I suppose many will buy up extra pesticides this year because they're afraid that prices will increase. But some prices will really be lowered because some of the less uh, harmful products will be cheaper. And uh, the idea is, of course, to have the, the less negative impact on the ecosystem if there is more revenue from this reform, which is now based on, on prices, we know here that prices will actually uh, usually have a lot uh, to do with people's um, uh, habits and way of, of doing. Uh, they are very price um, conscious, yes, that's it. And, uh, and we f think that this is a very uh, good way of, uh, of actually influencing the way of doing. But if there is an extra revenue for the state with this new tax system, this will be used for other technology, new technology and research in uh, the field of less harmful plant protection, weed resistant management. And, um, and I think this is uh, the good idea that when you have extra revenues, it just doesn't go to to the state, but also will be used for, for uh, development of better wheat resistance management. It is also combined with, I mean, I, I'm not especially hard on crime, but stricter control with illegal imports will be, will be uh, one of the results. There will be heavy fines, and as I said before, even withdraw the right to, to apply pesticides. Uh, and then what? What about the farmers? They will be compensated maybe for, it, for the extra costs? No, they were already. The old former government had uh, a program called um, Green Growth 2.0, and uh, they have had uh, reduction in property taxes already. So there's no new compensation for extra uh, expenses to pesticides. At the same time, the government has a plan also to increase the acres uh, or the areas of um, organic production. Already before, there was uh, an ambition to increase by 100% the uh, area of organic production from 2007 to 2020. When we came into government, we, I thought that now we're going to hire uh, this uh, percentage, but they decide that the the um, uh, the process has been so slow slow that they wanted to to keep the same ambition but to intensify uh, the change, and so there's now a plan for um, an action plan for having more uh, 
um, organic crops. For instance, by having uh, the obligation for public procurement to buy organic food. So there is a, a plan to, to lower the uh, application of uh, herbicides, the impact at least by 40%, and there is an ambition to increase the uh, in, uh, organically grown uh, acres with um, 100% from 2007. So altogether, this means that we want less pesticides. We want less uh, weed resistant, um, no, yeah, what's called herbicide resistant weeds. And we want uh, to, to be sure that if EFSA makes decisions on which plants, GMOs, to allow into the EU, then it's done on a basis that we can have confidence in and not on a basis of something that could always be questioned. So I think this is a way of saying we're not totally against uh, genetically modified plants or against the future development of uh, crops, but we are against uh, crops being allowed in on a too thin uh, basis to thin evaluation. And um, in that respect, I have, of course, now uh, the ambition or the hope that EFSA will, be, will take into consideration not only the genetically modified plant, but what comes with it, that is, the extra amount of, of herbicides and the extra amount of uh, other uh, fertilizers or pesticides or whatever. So um, I think we have to beware not to stop uh, development, not to stop research and development of new crops and ways of doing, but we have to be very aware that we don't uh, put any uh, harm to, uh, to nature that can not be um, this resolved in, in, in our time. It's very important how we treat our nature, how we treat water, and uh, not only for us, but for future generations, because we don't know the long-term effects of these things. Thank you.